Hello, in this video I'll be working through Unit 2 homework problems 8 through 10. And these are all calculator active questions. For number 8, we're told a cup of coffee has its temperature F, measured in degrees Fahrenheit, at time T, measured in minutes, given by the function F of T, where F of T equals 75 plus 110 e to the negative 0.05 T. For part A, we're asked to use a central difference with H equal to 0.01 to estimate the value of F prime of 10. F prime of 10 is the instantaneous rate of change of the function when t is 10. And we're going to use the average rate of change to estimate the instantaneous rate of change. And to make this a good estimate, we want to make sure that we choose two points that are really close to 10, so that our average rate of change is approximately equal to our instantaneous rate of change. Well, how close do we want those two points to be? That's our h value. So we're going to use points at 10 minus 0.01 and then 10 plus 0.01. So we're going to go a little bit past 10 to 10.01 and then a little bit before 10, so 9.99. And we're going to find the average rate of change between those two points. So average rate of change on the interval 9.99 to 10.01. And we'll use our average rate of change formula. That's just f of, and we'll use a capital F since that's how our function is defined, f of 10.01 minus f of 9.99 over the change in our t values, 10.01 minus 9.99. And then I'm going to go to the calculator and compute that value. And I'm getting negative 3.33592. So that's the average rate of change on the interval from 9.99 to 10.01, which is going to estimate the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 10. Part B, what are the units on this value? So f prime of 10 is approximately negative 3.336, we'll say. And this is the rate of change in temperature with respect to time. So it's degrees Fahrenheit per minute. All right, if we go back and look at how we computed that in the numerator of our fraction, this was the change in temperature. So our units there, we'll say change in temp, and our units there were degrees Fahrenheit. And then in our denominator, we have the change in time, and our units there were minutes. So degrees Fahrenheit per minute will be the units for our instantaneous rate of change. And that tells us at the moment, at the instant, when t equals 10 minutes, the temperature is decreasing at a rate of 3.336 degrees Fahrenheit per minute. So let's write this out. The temperature is decreasing, and I know that because the instantaneous rate of change is negative, so is decreasing at a rate of 3.336 degrees Fahrenheit per minute at time t equals 10 minutes. Part C, which do you expect to be greater, f prime of t or f prime of 20? f prime of 10 is measuring how quickly the temperature is changing at that time. And f prime of 20 would be how quickly is the temperature changing at that time. Well, as time goes on, yes, the coffee is still cooling down, so the temperature is dropping, but it's dropping by a smaller and smaller amount. Right? It's going to cool very quickly in the beginning, and then it's going to cool more slowly as time goes by. But since we're dealing with negative numbers, if the rate is getting smaller, that means it's getting closer to zero, and negative numbers that approach zero if we think in terms of a number line, if our negative numbers are approaching zero, they're actually getting larger. So f prime of t, 
since it's a negative number, is actually going to be less than f prime of 20. Because our temperature is decreasing at a decreasing rate. And part D, write a sentence that describes the behavior of the function y equals f prime of t on the time interval from 0 to 30. How do you think the graph will look? Well, f prime of t is negative. And it's approaching 0. And we already said it's decreasing at a decreasing rate. The original function f is decreasing at a decreasing rate. So our derivative is going to be negative and getting closer and closer to 0. So I'm going to estimate the derivative graph to look something like that. So f prime of t. Number nine, the temperature change t in degrees Fahrenheit in a patient that is generated by a dose q in milliliters of a drug is given by the function t equals f of q. What does it mean to say f of 50 equals 0.75? f of q, that's our original function, f of q is the change in temperature generated by a dose of q. So f of 50 would mean that our q is 50. That's our dose. So 50 milliliter dose will result in a temperature change of 0.75 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we can say a dose of 50 milliliters will result in a temperature change of 0 0.75 degrees Fahrenheit. Part B, a person's sensitivity, S, to the drug is defined by the function S of Q equals F prime of Q. What are the units of sensitivity? F prime of Q is going to be the derivative of f of q. And if we think of, if we change our notation here, we can think of that as df over dq. So it's the change in f, and f measures the change in temperature. So it's the change in temperature change Per, then dq, q is the dose, so it's the change in dose. So the units there, units in the numerator were degrees Fahrenheit, and in the denominator were milliliters. So our derivative f prime of q will have units of degrees Fahrenheit per milliliter. And part c, suppose that f prime of 50 equals negative 0.02. Write a complete sentence to explain the meaning of this value and include information given from part a. So in both cases, we have an input value of 50. f of 50 is 0.75 f prime of 50 is negative 0.02. f prime of 50, that is an instantaneous rate of change at q equals 50. So we can say when receiving a dose of 50 milliliters, a person's temperature will drop, and we know this, the, the 
rate is going to be dropping because the derivative is negative. So the person's temperature will drop at a rate of 0 0.02 degrees Fahrenheit per milliliter. And if we include the information from part A, we can also say and is expected to change by 0.75 degrees Fahrenheit. Number 10, the velocity of a ball that has been tossed vertically in the air is given by V of t. V of t equals 16 minus 32 t, where V is measured in feet per second, t is measured in seconds. The ball is in the air from t equals 0 until t equals 2. Part A, when is the ball's velocity the greatest? Well, we have the velocity equation. So we can use our calculator to graph the velocity equation and on that time interval between 0 and 2 to see where the y value is the largest. Since the graph is a decreasing line, it's going to have its largest value at the earliest t value, so at t equals 0. Part B, determine the value of v prime of 1. Justify your thinking. v prime of 1 is the derivative of the velocity equation, uh, the derivative of v of t at the instant when t equals 1. Well, our derivative, another interpretation of this is just the slope of v of t. And since v of t is linear, it has a constant slope. So at t equals 1 or t equals 2 or t equals 3 or t equals 4, the slope is still going to be negative 32. So v prime of 1 is negative 32. And the units on my derivative, right, this is dv over dt. So it's the change in v over the change in t. And we were given the units for v as feet per second. And we were given the units of t as seconds. So the units of my derivative are feet per second per second or we can say feet per second squared. Part C, what are the units on the value of v prime of 1? Oh, I jumped the gun a little bit there. What does this value and the corresponding units tell you about the behavior of the ball at time t equals 1? Well, the derivative is negative, so that means the slope is negative. And that means that v of t is decreasing, so I know that the velocity of the ball, that's my function v of t, the velocity of the ball is decreasing. And I know that because the derivative is negative, the slope is negative. And if the slope is negative, the function must be decreasing. So the velocity of the ball is decreasing at a rate of negative 32 feet per second squared. Part D, what is the physical meaning of the function v prime of t? Well, that would be the rate of change of the velocity, which would give us the acceleration. So it is the ball's acceleration at time t.